Good morning, everybody. Welcome. It's great to see all of you here. Welcome. We've got a lot of guests with us here this morning, and, and we're so thankful that you're here. We want to welcome everybody online that's uh, worshiping at home. We know we've got people across the nation that are joining us, and thank you. You're a part of Hilltop, and you may not be here physically, but you are here in spirit. So welcome to all our live streamers this morning, and happy Easter to you as well, and to everyone here uh, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? And in El Segundo, we've got a, a packed patio. We had a wonderful crowd at the early service as well. So, so much to be thankful for. You know, I'm not going to have you hug or stand or greet or anything like that. You can relax this morning. But there is kind of a tradition that, that some Christians do where someone will say the Lord is risen and people respond, he is risen indeed. And I kind of like that. So maybe you could help me with that this morning. I'll say he is risen. You say he is risen indeed. You ready? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Okay. That was like you need a cup of coffee or something. <laughs> He's risen indeed. <laughs> Get on with it. <laughs> I'll try one more time. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, he is. And, and that is what gives us hope this morning. And Listen, I don't know about you, but a lot of people have lost hope lately. Have you realized that? Maybe you've lost hope. But because Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, we have a hope that will not fail us, a hope that will not disappoint us because it is rooted in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? If you're a Christ follower, if you've put your hope in Christ, then you can know this morning, you have nothing to fear. You have nothing that's going to disappoint you. Hope in this world can let you down, but hope in Jesus will never let you down. Amen? You with me on that? You can believe that. You can bank on that this morning. Because, listen, life without hope is depressing. And maybe you've wrestled with depression over this past year with everything going on. Life without hope is discouraging and life without hope leads to despair. Do you know what despair is? The definition of despair? It is absolutely no hope at all. Despair is just where you have just absolutely hit the bottom. But God wants you to know this morning that hope is closer than you think. Hope is closer, closer than you realize. And in fact, hope is standing right beside you now. Hope has a name. It's Jesus Christ, and He has risen from the dead. And no matter how, I, I don't know what place you're in this morning. You, you might come discouraged. You might come distracted with everything going on on this special morning. Maybe you have felt some despair in your heart. Maybe you felt discouraged about a relationship or, or something else. And this morning, I just want you to know, if, if you will tap into the Word of God and hear the words of Jesus this morning, you can leave here with great hope. And it is not hope like the world offers. It is hope that God's, God offers. And it's a hope that you can count on. You can take it to the bank. And so I, I, my prayer, really, I've been praying all week that this morning, that no matter where you're at, if, if you come with a little hope, you leave with more. If you come with no hope, you can leave with a great hope this morning and that your hope will be restored. So let's look at how Jesus brings us hope in the word of God. Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 24, and it's a pretty long text if you've got a Bible or you got it on your phone. I'll encourage you to follow along Luke chapter 24, and we'll begin in verse 13. If you've got your phones, you can go to Bible Gateway or some type of a Bible app. Or you can just, just listen to Luke 24, verse 13. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. 
One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these days? What things? He asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. And in, the, in addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but did not find the body. And they came and they told us that they had seen a vision of angels who had said he was alive. And, and some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are. How slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it's nearly evening, the day's almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Verse 30. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he began to give it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? And they got up and they returned at once to Jerusalem and there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together. And they're saying, it is true. The Lord is risen and has appeared to Simon. And then the two told of what had happened on their way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is an amazing encounter right after the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. There's these Two, two people, one's named Cleopas, and, and they're walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, thinking that Jesus is dead. Now, the, we don't know who's with Cleopas, but we know that they're, they're walking along and they are very discouraged. Their heads are downcast and they are confused about Jesus. And they're confused about the stories that they're hearing because they thought that Jesus was dead. And now these women are, are talking and they're saying he's, he's risen from the dead. And we looked and an angel appeared and the women were right. Can you say that with me? This, say that with me. The women were right. I heard a lot of women say that. Uh, men, uh, a little louder, guys. The women were right. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and that is highly significant. In these times, it's highly significant that Jesus would have women be the first to witness the resurrection. It's significant that Jesus would have women be the last ones by his side on the cross when he died. Because if you don't know the status of women in the time of Jesus, they couldn't even give testimony in the court of law. But here, Jesus is elevating their status. And what they say is the most important words that you could hear. And what they witnessed in Matthew's gospel, the risen Lord. And they hear that angel. And they are right. Becky, my wife, was at, at the early service. And so I had a little fun telling her, you know, the women were right. <laughs> She got a kick out of that. And, and, you know, early on in our marriage, there were nine words that really blessed us that, that we were told to say often. Nine words. You were right. I was wrong. Please forgive me. Say that with me. You were right. I was wrong. Please forgive me. You want to bless your marriage? You want to bless relationships? Memorize those words and meet them because they're important. But these women are testifying, they're telling this story, and these guys are on this road and they just don't get it. What are they doing? 
Well, what do you do after Jesus has been crucified? You go home. Just go home and try to figure out life. So they're confused about the stories. They're confused about Jesus and the stories these women are sharing. And they are in despair. And it's kind of funny to me that Jesus, he's just kind of, he's kind of appearing and disappearing at this point after the resurrection. I don't even know how that happens. Like, we have one story where it sounds like the doors are locked and Jesus just walks right into the room, like somehow walks through these walls. So he's risen and they're going along and what happens? Jesus just appears and he says, what's up guys? I'm paraphrasing a little here, but basically he's like, hey, what you talking about? Hey, hey, what you talking about? And it says they stop in their tracks with their heads down and they say, what kind of stupid are you? Now, they don't know it's Jesus, so I don't think they'd have been that disrespectful. But they stop in their tracks. They say, what kind of stupid is this guy? The Bible says they were amazed. They're like, have you been hiding under a rock? Don't you realize everything that's transpired in the last few days it says they were astonished verse 17 and 18 but I want you to take a look or listen to verse 21 this just captured my heart after Jesus talks a little bit they they say this verse 21 we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel had hoped it is past tense right they had hoped in other words They had lost hope. Do you realize that? And what is significant is hope is standing right beside them. You see that? See, we've lost hope. So many people have have lost hope in our world today. So many people are discouraged and hope is right beside you. You got to look up and realize hope has a name. It's Jesus. Jesus. And he has risen from the dead. And he is closer than you think. He is right next to you. But they don't realize it. Not unlike today, I would say. We're surrounded with a lot of reasons to lose hope. Have you realized that? With the shootings that have been taking place. These horrible shootings. It seems like, I don't watch the news, but it seems like I'm just hearing about you know, they went into the supermarket. They went into the massage parlor. They, you know, they ram a guy at the cap, they ram the guards at the ca- Capitol building. There's death and there's dying all around us. And we're hearing about it every day. There's political division. There is racial division. And people are losing hope like never before. But what we need to know is the hope For life, abundant life, everlasting life, is just like with Cleopas. It's right there. It's a hope that will not fail you. It's a hope that will not disappoint you. Hope is standing right beside you this morning. I hope you realize it. that. Jesus is in our midst. And Jesus is risen from the dead. And he is appearing to people. He appeared to more than 500 people that were alive all at one time. He appeared to the apostles. He appeared. And so they are alive and they are witness and they are sharing this testimony. Jesus is risen from the dead. So after they they tell kind of their sad story, Jesus flips it on them. And instead of them thinking Jesus is stupid, Jesus kind of asks, what kind of stupid are you? (laughs) So it's kind of a reverse here. It's. By the way, don't get in a stupid contest with Jesus, (laughs) right? You will always lose. The the Pharisees were doing that. The Sadducees, they're always trying to prove him wrong. They're always trying to embarrass him. They're always trying to, you know, take away his testimony. But look what he says. And he says this in a loving way. And so I want you to hear this in love. This is important. He said to them, how foolish you are. How slow to believe. All that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer before entering his glory? Jesus had to suffer. Did you know that? 
And it was horrible. I was talking with a friend this morning and said, it's just so horrible that, that he had to go through this. And in fact, after worship, if you could stay for a little bit, we've got some sta stations of the cross. We're going to line up and, and we're going to have some prayer stations over here. I'd encourage you to do that. We've got a, a takeaway for you. But some people this morning, just it it's the, starts at the cross and ends at that resurrection. And the cross is brutal, right? It's the most humiliating, ugly way to die. Did anybody force Jesus? No, it says, he says he had to. Why did Jesus have to die? He had to die because he loves you. He had to die because he is paying a price for your sins. And only Jesus could do that. Jesus is the only one who's walked the face of this earth that did not sin, and yet he took on your sin. He took on your transgressions. He took on your failures, and Jesus was the only perfect lamb of God. It's only Jesus who could pay the price for your sins. And so it says, he says, he had to do this. He had to die for you. It's the only way that you could be forgiven. Now, they still don't realize what's going on. And so they get to the house and Jesus takes some bread and he serves them bread. Now, a couple things that are significant. First of all, Jesus, the son of God, is serving, which is really a reversal. But that's what Jesus always chose to do, didn't he? Jesus was that humble servant. And it was the custom for the people of the house to serve their guests. But Jesus uses this opportunity and he takes some bread. And as he breaks the bread, the scales fall from their eyes. And they realize it is Jesus. Right there, they realize this is Jesus. And I don't know if they just remember about stories about Jesus breaking bread with the disciples or what, but something got to their heart. Do you remember the time, if you're a Christian here, when the scales fell from your eyes and you realized that Jesus was truly the Son of God? Do you remember that time when your eyes were opened or maybe your heart was opened? Have you ever had the opportunity of, of being with someone when they realize that Jesus is truly risen and Jesus is who he said he is? I, I tell you, that's the favorite part of ministry for me. What I love about this job is when somebody recognizes Jesus is truly who he said he was and that you have hope. You have hope for life everlasting. You have hope to be forgiven because what Jesus has done for you. Does anybody here, I asked this at the early service, does anybody here remember uh, the name Shirley Halpern? Just raise your hand. If you're, anybody remember? A few of us remember Shirley. It's been, been decades now, right, Fred? Yeah. And I, I remember studying with Shirley. Now, you've got to understand, Shirley had a very rough background. She had been homeless at times. She had committed sins that we've all committed sin. I hope you know that. But, you know, she, hers were just visible. Like you could just tell life had been hard on Shirley. And you know, she had tattoos all over and she had tattoos on each of her fingers. And I remember I, I'd be preaching and when she'd, I'd be up front and she'd close her eyes or blink or something. And she had tattoos on her eyelids, you know, that would, and tattoos her fine, God loves, loves us all. I'm not saying anything about tattoos, but I'm just saying she, she, she committed so many sins. And here was the problem for Shirley. She didn't think she was good enough for Jesus to die for her because of all the sins she had committed. She had lied. She had cheated. She had been in relationship after relationship. But God forgave a murderer I mean, God forgave King David when his heart truly was sorry and he repented. And I was reading, 
Isaiah 53, which is just a, a wonderful passage. It was written 400 years before Jesus walked the face of this earth, but it was about this time that Jesus would die. And it says in Isaiah 53, and I was reading this to her, that Jesus would come as a suffering servant of all, a servant all the way to the cross. And it said, he was pierced for your transgressions. He was crushed for your iniquities. The sin, the chastisement that we deserve was placed on him. And then it happened. She said, he would do that for me. I said, yeah, surely he did that for you. And tears just began to run down her cheeks. And she realized she had hope for eternal life with God. And I looked down at her arms and literally I could just see the hair stand straight up. She was just overcome with thankfulness and gratefulness that no matter how bad her past, Jesus loves her. And Jesus died, gave his life for her. She had hope, probably for the first time. She, like Cleopas and his friend, had hoped, past tense, but now she realized the only hope, the true hope, was right in front of her, right beside her. The Bible talks about this hope, and I want to read this passage for you. It's in Romans chapter 5. And I want you just to consider for a moment how the hope in Jesus is different from a hope in the world. Like, I don't even know how the Bruins did last. Did the Bruins lose? Yeah, you had hoped, right, Kenneth? That's <laughs> a wipeout? It's a tie, okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> you had hoped, right? But that, see, that's the worldly hope is you kind of, I hope the economy hangs in there. I hope the vaccine comes out and, and I hope that it works, right? And all these different hopes. But listen to the biblical hope that you have in Jesus. It is vastly different. You ready? This is important verse. Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Verse 3, we too can rejoice when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength and strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope. It's a confident hope of salvation. Verse five, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. That's what you need to hear this morning. You can leave this place confident that hope in Jesus Christ will not fail you. It will not disappoint you for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love when we were utterly helpless or hopeless Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. See, that's what Shirley had to understand. You don't, you don't get your life totally together and then become a Christian. No, Jesus died while we were yet sinners. And that's why we have this grace of God and we have this hope in our lives. So they're on the road to Emmaus and you are on a road this morning. Everybody here, you're on a journey. You're on a path, and Jesus is right beside you. That's what we learn from this. He is right there. So how do you respond? Let me share one more verse, and then I want you to listen to a song. 
So we need this hope, right? And uh, Matthew chapter 7, maybe you know this passage. Matthew chapter 7 says this. Knock and the door will be what? Opened for you. Ask and ye will receive. Knock and the door will be open. Ask and you will receive. For the one who seeks finds, the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And he's talking about the door to your heart. And so I want to encourage you this morning, before you leave, even if you're a Christian already and you get all this, can you just open your heart to leaving with a greater sense of hope because Jesus is risen today? Listen, you don't have to live in fear in spite of everything that's going on around us. God is right there for us. He's always been there for us. You don't have to leave this place discouraged. You don't have to leave in despair in spite of everything, all the craziness. Jesus is more powerful than all of that. And how do we know? Because he's risen from the dead. He has the power over death. And that's the power that you need desperately for your life this morning so you can live with this hope every day of your life. So the question is, will you open your heart? Will you allow Jesus, who's right beside you now, to reveal himself? And will you let him come in and receive his love, his grace, his joy, his peace, and his power? Now, we have been doing a spiritual discipline every week, and Monica's been sending these out if you're on our email list uh, in, in a way to draw closer to the Lord. We've been doing spiritual disciplines, and this week we're just going to ask you to spend some time just meditating on hope, maybe go on a prayer walk, and just how is Christ giving you hope right now when there's so much hopelessness around us? And just pray for God to bring that hope that you'll have confidence in that hope. So the good news is hope is closer than you think. Hope has a name. It's Jesus and he's risen from the dead. So one, I want you to leave with hope. Two, if you just do one thing for me now and just listen to the words of this song, I promise you, you'll be blessed. You're going to recognize this tune, but I think the words might be new to you. They were to me. So could you all feel free? You could sing along if you want, if you know the words, or you could just bow your head. I'm just going to close my eyes, and I'm just going to soak in the hope through the risen Lord of Jesus. A crown of thorns placed on his head he knew that he would soon be dead He said, did you forget me, Father, did you?
had used his sword to pierce the body of our Lord, said truly this was Jesus Christ our Savior. He looked with fear upon his sword, then turned to face his Christ and Lord, fell to his knees crying, Took from his head the thorny crown And wrapped him in a linen gown Then laid him down to rest inside the tomb